Let's talk headshots, shall we? Every actor needs a headshot. Now there is a butt ton of advice on headshots out there, and there's so many people that are so particular about every little nuance of every single headshot, but no headshot is perfect, and every single one is gonna have a little flaw or something that could have been better about it, or somebody's opinion is gonna be different about it. So just kind of take those with a grain of salt. I like to think of a headshot as a product advertisement. It's always face on, very clear, very legible. Your eye goes right to the product. You know exactly what you're getting. So think of your headshot as a product photograph and you are the product. It has to look like you. It has to look like you at your best. It has to say to the world, this is what you're going to get with this actor. And it also has to be identifiable. You have to be able to look at that photo and say that is that person. That that picture also has to sell the product to a broad range of customers. Plus with that photo, you're also trying to show the product in the most appealing light. When do you need headshots? If you're in theater, especially if you're not in LA or New York or the West End, you're, you're probably not gonna need a new headshot more than once every couple years or so. For film, commercial, television, web series, all those things, you need to be as current your look as possible. Again, you need to be able to pick your face out of a room of people based on your headshot. When you're seeking out a headshot photographer, you want to look for actor headshot photographers. They are particular types of photographers that specialize in actor headshots. You do not want to look for artistic photographers. For instance, you don't want to look for fashion model photographers because they're used to taking glamorous shots and they're focusing on things that are model based and not actor based. You also don't want to look for artistic photographers or landscape photographers who take uh, beautiful scenic shots but have no experience shooting people. And you also totally want to avoid portrait photographers, family photographers, glamour shot photographers. And when you're looking at a headshot photographer, you want to make sure you check out their previous work make sure that you're seeing actor headshots on their on their website or in their portfolio and also ask them about how they go about their shooting process I often find that when I know the photographer and they're a friend I have a much better shoot my pictures look much more natural because I'm relaxed with them and we have a rapport and they know how to get a photo out of me how to get a pose out of me ask their photographer about their process and how they get you to get give your best uh, photography face. <laughs> So one of the most important things about uh, a headshot is your eyes. Your eyes should be the most important focus of the picture. So they should be bright, clearly lit, and open. You wanna be able to see your eyes clearly. If you uh, go out drinking the night before and you have a hangover, you're gonna have bags under your eyes or dark circles, you want to avoid that. So get plenty of rest before your headshot shoots so your eyes are, are nice and rested. Also in a photograph, when you're choosing your photographs, you wanna make sure that you can see the color of your eyes, especially if you have dark eyes like mine, you want to be able to see that brown or that gray or that green or that blue. And you want to choose a an outfit, a shirt, uh, top, whatever, that kind of matches the color of your eyes so that it gives that sort of consistency throughout the photo. You want to look for pins of light, dots of light, circles of light inside the eye, reflecting off the eye. Two or three lights is, is ideal, and it's those little pinpoints of light that really make the eyes pop. The next most important thing in a headshot is your mouth. If you're doing a theatrical headshot, most theatrical headshots are just a, a smile with no teeth or just a plain expression, a positive expression. So like this. You know, a, a gentle smile, a grin, something like that. If you're doing a headshot for commercials, you want a nice commercial smile. Again, it's about the product and your face is gonna help them sell a product. So. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna want somebody who, who has a nice smile. Uh, and if you're doing film and television, you want something in between. Again, you wanna kind of gear that smile or your mouth expression toward the type of character you are. And a smile with maybe a little, little teeth or uh, not so much teeth is appropriate. You want a headshot nowadays to be framed about uh, chest, nipple, uh, to about an inch above the head. Kind of the framing that I have in this video right now. This is a good headshot, but you know, see my head is still small on the screen, so you might want to crop in a little bit more, but you want to shoot it at about this level. Even though it, the focus is the head, 
they really want the head and shoulders because that gives a little bit more of an idea of your body type and what they're getting you know from the neck down you want to make sure that your headshots are straight on so basically the camera is level with you level with your eyes and it's not above like a selfie or down below like some domineering picture and you don't want to have a, a twist of the head turn of the head um, you also don't want to be turned like this too much because it just doesn't look good on on camera you want a straight direct shot Lighting is important. You want to fill in those shadows. So if I shut my shot here, this is a nice little artistic looking shot here for a, a shoot, but you, you, this shadow on my face, you can't see my eyes. Now it looks artistic, but again, that's not what headshots are about. That's the job of a DP or a color corrector on a set. Um, so you want your uh, light to come from multiple sources to be big enough that it doesn't cast harsh shadows on your face look for the sockets of your eyes the the sides of your face down here all those kind of things you want to be well lit uh, you want your hair out of your face if you've got long hair you might want to consider pulling it back it doesn't always fit the type that you're going for to have your hair pulled back but make sure it's out of your face make sure that we can see back to about your ears and make sure we can see some of your forehead, at least your eye, range, eye area should be seen. And then the same thing with clothes. You want simple, plain clothes, solid colors that pop with your eyes. You also don't want your clothes to be the same color as the background. If you walk onto set and they have a blue background, don't wear a blue shirt. Bring some choices to the photo shoot as well for, for wardrobe. If you're wearing jewelry in the shot, I recommend you don't, but you know, a, a simple necklace, a simple ring, something like that, that is probably fine, but uh, jewelry can often cause weird reflections in the camera or can just date your picture a little bit. So it, it or it can also change the type that uh, people think of you as. So kind of minimize the jewelry as much as possible. You don't want to put your hands in the shot because hands are distracting and it's not about your hands, it's about your head. If they want to see your hands, they'll do a hand shot. The background in a shot should not be busy. So a lot of photographers will take you to a park and they'll have trees in the background and it'll be harsh lighting. So you'll see a lot of contrasty leaves in the background. It causes distraction. You want the focus to be on your face. Again, on the product, not on the background of the product. A plain background is usually best. So studio shots are my uh, my preference for shooting, but also just a plain wall outside would will do a, a solid sky or a, a building that's in the back that, you know, just something that's plain and ordinary and doesn't have a lot of lines or, or patterns in it. Now it's popular for a photographer to use a, de a shallow depth of field and that's where you get the blurry background but your face is in focus. And that's per perfectly fine, especially if you're shooting outdoors, but you wanna make sure that the depth of focus is not so shallow that only your fa eyes are in focus and your nose is out of focus or your chin is out of focus. You want to make sure that your face from your ears to your nose is completely in focus. Now in the olden days, you used to have one headshot, basically that's all you could afford and you printed that out and that was used for everything. Nowadays with digital auditions and whatnot, more and more casting directors are just using digital headshots. You don't need to actually print the headshot out and agencies are doing the same thing. So that gives you much more flexibility and I recommend that anytime you do a headshot shoot, you should get at least two looks and if you can get four or more, great because the more photos you you have the more different uh, options you have when you're submitting for a role. Having options in your headshots to submit gives you more life out of each session. So you can uh, spend that money once and then use those headshots for a variety of occasions for the next couple years. It's important that your photographer's photos look good out of the camera. So the raw photo should be pretty good right out of the bag. You shouldn't have to doctor up the background. You shouldn't have to sharpen a part of the image or blur a part of the image or cut a part of the image out. You should not have to alter anything on your face. Um, the only things that are acceptable to alter after the fact are like maybe an acne, a zit that pops up or something that you normally don't have on your face. But the bags under your eyes, the wrinkles in your forehead, the crinkle, crink, the crow's feet on your your eyes, the color of your teeth, all those things 
need to be as close to how they actually look in person. Otherwise, you're misrepresenting the product that you're selling and somebody's gonna call you on that when you get into the room. So make sure the photo is good out of the can and then the only tweaks that the photographer needs to make are uh, lighting and balance, contrast adjustments, uh, you know, just giving it a little bit of a, a bump in, in saturation and contrast to make it pop a little bit more. When you get your proofs back and you're choosing your headshot, that's always the hardest part. Uh, you want to ask a bunch of opinions, but you want to ask casting directors and agents and um, directors and other actors, not your friends and your family, because they're going to pick the photos that look the best as a photo and not necessarily the photos that represent you. Ask your friends, which one looks like me? Which one looks like me? And <laughs> they'll let you know for sure. Still make it your choice take the best advice from those people but you know which ones suit you well so rely on your gut as well there are um, a couple groups on facebook that critique headshots for actors uh, i'll put some links down in the description below so make sure you visit that and if you have any questions about head headshots that i didn't answer in this video please leave a comment down below i will answer every single comment and i'll try to give and extend my advice beyond this video thanks for joining me today i'm glad to see you here and i hope to see you again soon